Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel Software Testing. My name is Daniel Knott and I'm happy that you're here today. If you have seen the last videos on mobile testing, this is another video that you would like to see because it also takes the topic of mobile testing. And the topic is today how to select the right mobile test automation tool for you. That's great because if you have seen the video that I did before, like which mobile testing tool you should use in 2022, make sure to follow the link up um, um, up there to take a look at the video. Um, I created this video to give you an, an insight on the current testing tools on the market for mobile apps. And this video you can use on just start your thinking on um, how to select the right tool for your needs and for your environment. So let's take a look. So test automation tool times. This is the first topic that I would like to talk about because it's really important to know how these tools work these days. So because they're different approaches that can impact your testing, that can impact your tech stack, that can impact your test environment. So let's take a look. So there are first of all, there are tools like um, they use image recognition in order to um, identify elements on the screen. So uh, with image recognition is some, some tools like Sikuli, for example, out there. So you can make a little tiny screenshot, for example, of a button of your app, but also of, the, of a browser or of any other um, um, tool on, or system that you have. And the image recognition tool is used um, is using the screenshots to identify um, the elements and to execute the test case. Um, then there are like coordinate based recognition tools. They use really X and Y coordinates in order to, to save the, the, the right spot of the button, for example, or of the elements to, to tap them later on. I have to say these kind of tools are more or less outdated and not really on the market anymore. But in the beginning of mobile, mobile testing in 2010 and 2011, there were some tools on the market that were using this kind of um, um, recognition. But um, as you can already imagine, is X and Y coordinates are changing, especially if you if you scroll on the screen, and this is really error prone and and it doesn't doesn't make any sense to use. Um, then we have um, optical character or text recognition. So these kind of tools they really check for text on the screen and uh, identify elements based on the text, which is which is a valuable approach. And then of course we have native object recognition really using uh, native identifiers of buttons, of text, of control elements and so forth. And as you can imagine, it's not a surprise, this is the most stable approach and also the, the most common use, um, use case that the modern testing tools for mobile these days um, are using. So, but I just wanted to make sure that you have heard at least the other sections and to, to, to um, give you some more knowledge on that field. So let's take a look. But before you automate, I have some, some, some rules for you. So don't start blindly with automation. That's the rule number one to say, because I've seen so many teams in the past failing with automation, not particular with mobile testing or mobile automation, but with any automation, because they just started blindly without any plan, without any idea of what they would like to achieve and what automation should should help them with, right? So the idea is that you should sit down with your team, with the developers, collaborate and make a plan because then you know, okay, what you would like to focus on, which parts you really want to test, which parts you would like to cover with tool A or B and which parts you would not cover because this might be too complex to automate or too, too error prone or there's like a highly um, changing rate of, of new features. This is all something that you should put in your plan, in your automation strategy. And without having this in place, you should not start. Um, part of the making a plan is also you should take a look at your tech stack because this also influences the, the tool selection. Um, because if you have a, a specific tech, tech stack and a tool that you ever wanted to use uh, in your next mobile project doesn't fit to your tech stack, it doesn't make sense to use it because you will fail. Um, I said it already in the making a plan section, collaborate with your developers because you would need their, their help and support and also their buy-in to support the automation. Um, also, there is no single automation solution out there. It's always a combination of tools, at least for mobile, that you should think of and keep in mind to, to combine the tools to get the best out of it. Um, 
yeah, a combination of tools is common, as I said. And last but not least, you should really start simple because don't start too complex. It's similar with don't start blindly. Start simple, start easy, make baby steps in order to have a successful automation in place. So what should be automated? That's the question, right? So what you would really like to automate and what should be automated? This is a question you should ask yourself. First of all, never try to automate everything. If your manager, if somebody in your organization tells you that, no, this is not possible. It's not possible to automate everything and it doesn't make sense to automate everything. As I said before, make a plan, sit down with your team and based on the outcome, start with automation. Think about your tech stack. I already said that. Make a plan what to automate on which level. I just can repeat myself and it was on purpose that I'm <laughs> repeating myself in this video on that slide because it's so important to have this plan in, in mind on a piece of paper in a document somewhere. Doesn't matter where, but it should be documented to know what to automate where. Because from that plan, you can derive tickets, you can write, derive technical user stories in your, if you're working with agile methodologies in your sprint, in your Kanban flow, to, to have it in, in place and also to have it transparent for every stakeholder. And here are some examples. Um, automate business critical parts. So this is something that you sh can focus on, right? When you ask uh, yourself the question, what should be automated? Or you automate user journeys and workflows. Yeah? This is also, depending on your project, this can be a solution or a, a first starting point. Or you automate repetitive tasks to free up your time for real testing activities. Right, just some examples. So, emulators, simulators, or real device? That's another question that you should ask yourself. Where you would like to execute the tests on which devices and which environment? Because this also influences the tool selection. So, make sure to define the test automation environment before selecting a tool. So, this is really important. Um, emulators and simulators are free to use and usually part of the development SDK. And these are tools or environments where, for example, developers should start working with. Whenever they work on new tools on mobile, they can use emulators and simulators provided by the SDK to start really easy and simple without having to connect, I don't know, a couple of devices to your computer and then test on real devices and so forth and so forth. It's perfect for them. Introduce them or make this um, part of your plan and strategy as well. Um, yeah, this is already what I said, can be used in an early stage, but this is not the real user environment. So don't rely completely on emulators and simulators because I never have seen a real customer using an Android simu emulator to use your product. And the same on iOS, right? They go to the app stores and download the app on a real device. So that's why you should also focus on real devices on your testing activities. Yeah, that's why I highly recommend you to automate against real devices being it in a cloud, being it on-premise solution, being it in an, in an own um, developed um, CI, CD pipeline um, connected with the device. It, it depends on your project. It depends on your project budget as well, but um, automate or execute on real devices. So how to select the, real, the right tool? Um, there is no one, one size fits all solution. I already said that before. Yeah, there's always a combination of tools needed and required in order to get the best out of it what I just said. Um, also important to, to keep in mind, programming skills are required. Even though low-code and no-code testing tools are on the rise, um, offering nice um, solutions, but to get really the hard challenges implemented, I highly recommend you to get some uh, yourself some programming skills. So to at least remember Java or Objective-C, Kotlin, Swift are languages to start with maybe Python as well, uh, really nice programming languages that you can use in order to automate with a, with a certain tool that are on the market. And then uh, you should def define selection criteria um, when searching for a test automation tool. So these selection criteria are really like some, um, some um, private, not really private, but some um, special requirements that you have with your team, with your product, and these criteria should be off on the selection list. So make a list, make a checklist, and write down the criteria, and then tick them off. Does the tool support X, Y, and Z? If yes, then that's the right tool. And here are some examples of selection criteria. Um, 
So which mobile platforms are supported by the tool? Is it iOS and Android? Is it only iOS and Android? This, is in, this can have a big impact on the selection of the tool. As I said before, I made a video on uh, mobile testing tools. Um, take a look at my video collection for that, because there I'm going to uh, share some insights on the different tools for mobile apps. Um, can the tool handle all app types, or all different app types that are out there, so native, hybrid, and web apps? Depending on the app that you have, this can have an impact on the tool selection. Is the tool able to execute the test on real devices and on cloud solutions? because this might be uh, a key differentiator for you selecting a tool. Is the tool offering reporting and screenshot capabilities? Do you need this? Yes, no, answer the question for yourself, but it can be helpful if a tool generates a report in the end of the text test execution. Um, how fast is the tool execution time? So if execution time is important for you, Make sure to have this in your, in your selection criteria and then do some research on the tools or implement, for example, an example app and in, install the apps that are, are the, the um, testing tools out there and um, execute the tests against your test app and see how fast the execution is. But there are also so many information on the different tools uh, online that you can see how fast are the different tools. Um, can the tool be integrated into CI/CD pipelines? It's a really important question and should be on the selection criteria. Um, are mobile specific use cases covered by the tool? So is the tool, for example, uh, supporting different gestures? So one finger, two fingers, three fingers, uh, different swipe rotation gestures, for example. Can the tool handle this? Yes, no. Is this a use case for you? Then this might be important. And um, yeah, does the tool also support different programming languages? Um, so there are tools out there that provide um, any kind of programming language that you would like to use in order to automate your things. There are tools that are um, tied to a specific language, especially the, the, the um, development tools that comes with the SDKs. They usually have the, the standard or like the de facto to use programming languages um, in petto. And there's more. Yeah, these were just eight examples of your selection criteria. Um, take a look um, and what is important for you. Make the list and maybe this list already helps you to, to identify the first questions that you should ask yourself in order to, to get the right tool. So let's take a look at the summary. As I said, there is no silver bullet for the, for the testing tools out there. Take time to evaluate the tools. Uh, as you have seen, there are like selection criteria that you can use. Um, answer the question, what should be automated? Answer the question, where it should be automated? And then keep also the different um, tool types in mind when selecting a tool. Um, yeah, I said it, I think, multiple times now. Select the right tool that fits into your tech stack and environment. Create a checklist for the selection criteria. I mentioned this as well. Um, evaluate and choose the tools based on your criteria and not on somebody else's criteria because they have some other tech stacks and some other requirements. So that's why important, take your time, sit down and make up your mind and then go for it and select the right tool. And last but not least, combine test automation tools. This is something that I have seen in the past so often and so many times. There is no single tool in a, in a, in a mobile app project. Usually you have a combination of unit testing tools, some API testing tools, and also some end-to-end -end user tools. And there are like lots of tools that are not really something that used in CI CD pipelining, but they're like small handy tools that can make your life easier as a software tester. So they're like tools like uh, the monkey runner to execute some really random commands on an app, or there are tools that intercept the, the connection between your app and the backend and so forth. So there's many, many more out there. But um, this is some now and homework for you to, to take a look at the criteria on yourself, on your tech stack, and then to select the right tool. And that's it for today. I really hope that the video triggered some of some questions in your mind and was helpful. If so, leave me a thumb up. And if you like, subscribe to my channel to support me. And I hope to see you next time. Bye bye.